Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and our co-host Anel is not going to be with us today. He hasn't been with us for the last month or so, but he will be with us again next week. Um, this is episode number 93, Unconscious Data and Processing Means No Free Will. And if I sound and look a little tired, it's because I, I am I'm very tired. I got maybe two and a half hours sleep last night because, like, well, I was expecting to get five, but then, like, the phone rang at around, like, quarter to nine in the morning, and I was expecting to sleep until 11. And, you know, this taping is at, like, at one. And um, so anyway, but this is, like, this is, like, a show that I got to do a lot more shows about this because, like, Basically, um, when I, I've explained why the unconscious makes free will impossible before, and when I do it, it kind of like, I just feel like, wow, this is really, really important. And part of it, I think, is like, I may be the only person in the world who is saying that, like, most people say that, like, that our decisions aren't completely freely willed because our unconscious is taking part in our decisions, you know? But basically what I've been saying for months now is that, like, it's our unconscious that's actually making the decision entirely, and then it makes us aware of what, what it's deciding. And I think that's like, you know, this, I did an episode on this, it's like, you know, Freud, Sigmund Freud popularized the, um, the idea that, that we have an unconscious, and I think Again, I'm, I'm either popularizing or also actually um, discovering that the idea that, like, you know, that our will, our human will, is entirely unconscious. And that's what this show is going to be about. Before we begin, um, I want to kind of, like, go over what we mean when we say we have a free will and why I'm doing this show, okay? Because this is like, you know, I've been doing this since January 2011. And, um, all right, basically, the reason I'm doing this is because, like, in our world is completely deluded about um, who we are as human beings, about why we do things. And it's either, you know, I say deluded. Um, it could be maybe more technically it's like we're completely mistaken. Um, in other words, like, to, to think that we have a free will... <coughs> is like the mistaken conclusion it's like <clears throat> we we definitely have a will in the sense that we we decide things and actually even most technically we don't have a will in that sense because like if, if like if all of our decisions are caused then they're actually caused by events that happened before we were born so we're not even actually making choices you know it's the universe is making the choices for us but um Okay, anyway, <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought. Um, okay, um, so yeah, this, um, I'm doing this show because, um, because yeah, we're, we're, oh yeah, we're completely mistaken, you know, deluded about who we are as human beings, and to the extent we get this right, we can just create a much, much better world. Um, and all right, when we say free will, what people generally mean is that we what we do is completely up to us or in some way up to us when actually it's not at all up to us um, that they say that like nothing that's not in our control is either taking part in our decisions or making them for us and again this show <laughs> is going to explain if I can like talk um, why the existence of our unconscious, why, you know, the fact that we have an unconscious just makes free will completely impossible, and, um, and basically just why the unconscious is actually making our entire decision, and I think it is revolutionary. I think I may be the only person in the world who is um, refuting free will in this way. Okay, hold on. All right, so let's start. Here's the thing. What is the unconscious? <clears throat> the unconscious is the part of our mind that we're not aware of. Okay? That's why they call it the unconscious. We're not conscious of it. Okay? In other words, like, 
right now, you know, your heart is beating, your lungs are filling with air, your nervous system, your organs are working, right? And you're not conscious of any of this. You know, this is all being done by your autonomous nervous system, your central nervous system, unconsciously, you know. You don't have to think about doing these kinds of things for them to work. And like with our mind, we have a part of our brain, a part of our mind that's unconscious. Again, that's why they call it the unconscious. And that's where we store all of our data. Our data means all of our memories, all, all that we've learned in the past, all we, we've experienced, all we've seen, heard, read, you know, done. That's where all our memories are, okay? Because they have to be, be this way. Because then, all right, we've defined what the unconscious is. What is the conscious mind? The conscious mind is what we're quote unquote aware of, okay? And we, we can't, you know, all that data, all of this stuff, our memories, has to be in our unconscious because, like, we can only be conscious of one or at most two or three things at a time. So, so basically, um, so, you know, to understand this a bit more clearly, think of like the conscious mind, consciousness as being awareness. It's not decision making, it's awareness. And again, if, if it can't, if we can only be aware of two or three things at a time, um, and all our memories are stored in our unconscious, you know, obviously when we're um, making a decision, we, we can't be making it with our conscious mind. That's what this show is about. So let's, let's go through this. Okay. So, all of our memories are in the unconscious, and our unconscious mind isn't even aware of our, of our conscious mind, I'm sorry, isn't even aware of our unconscious, okay? Again, that's why they call it the unconscious. Now, think about it. If you're going to make any decision, like what I'm saying right now, if, if I'm consciously going to make a decision, um and my conscious mind isn't aware of my unconscious, it obviously can't access my unconscious, all right? That's important. So what's actually happening as I'm making the decision, as I'm saying what I'm saying, as you're hearing what you're hearing, what's happening is that since all my vocabulary, all the words I know, the concepts, the memories, this, this knowledge of human will is in the unconscious, and my, uncon and my conscious mind can't access that information, isn't even aware of the information you know, in real time, what has to be happening with every decision we make is that the unconscious, the part of our brain that, that is the only part of our brain that has access to the data in the un unconscious, has to be making the decision. Okay, that's the point. If, if, if we're not consciously aware of our memories because they're all stored in the unconscious, you know, the only part of our mind that can be aware of that in order to, to, say, to do anything really, because you know, whatever we do, think, feel, decide, whatever, has to be based on, on past experiences and, and also on our genetics, which is also unconscious. Um, if all that stuff is in there, again, the decision has to be made at the level of the unconscious. Okay, um, that's, that's major. Um, think about it. Or you think about the genetics um, now. Basically with the genetics, um, with, you know, our genes are like, our, it's like our, um, our heredity. Like we, about 50% of our personality is genetic. And, um, God, I'm tired. <laughs> this is like my third show. Okay, I, I taped two shows before this. Uh, all right, if 50% if of our personality is genetic and uh, you know, our genes are, we're, we're not conscious of this, right? So obviously that's another, I wanna go through, I'm gonna go through this as many times as, as this show allows because like you gotta get this. It's very simple. Okay, one, the reason they call consciousness consciousness 
It's because it's awareness. You know, our conscious mind, to be conscious of something is to be aware of something. It's not to decide something, okay? That's why they call it consciousness. We're conscious. I'm conscious of the lights here. I'm conscious of the clock. I'm conscious of the cameras. I'm also conscious of my thoughts. So, like, what's happening when, when we make a decision? Since I, as I explained before, since all the data, all the language, the memories and stuff upon which we're going to base our decision is in the unconscious, then the decision has to also be made at the level of the unconscious. So what happens? The unconscious, you know, makes the decision and makes us quote unquote conscious of what it's done. It makes us aware of what, what we're done. So like, basically, like. Think of our mind as this vast unconscious that holds all of, you know, our data, okay? And so, like, think of our consciousness then as kind of like a spark of light or a spark of, of, of focus in the unconscious where the, the unconscious is choosing to make us aware of, of what it wants to make us most aware of. Because obviously, like, you know, my unconscious is like, you know, controlling my, my organs, but for whatever reason, it deems that I don't have to be consciously aware of, of that. You know, there's no reason f for me to, to have to do that. But for some reason that's a bit unexplainable, um, it does make us, you know, conscious of some of what we, um, some of what it decides. Okay. <laughs> so again, um, so you've got the unconscious, you know, th this part of our, our mind that holds all of our memories, our, our conscious mind can't access it, you know. And again, like, to, be, to have a free will, when, when people say, you know, I have a free will, they mean that I have a free conscious will. That they're not saying I have a free unconscious will because, like, you know, again, um, if, if, if what we're doing is unconscious, it can't be freely willed. There are experiments about this. Um, yeah, I'll just go into a little about how we know we have an unconscious. They, they take a, um, a subject, they hypnotize a subject, give them a post-hypnotic suggestion. They, they tell the subject, when you wake up from the hypnosis, you're going to see a plant on the windowsill, you're going to cover it with a cloth, bring it over to a table, put it down, and then bow three times. Okay? This is like, this is fact this is you know they've, they've done this so like they'll they'll hypnotize a person the person will go to the window take the plant cover it with the cloth put it on the table bow three times to it after the hypnosis you know they're not hypnotized anymore and they'll be asked well why did you do that you know the the, the person who hypnotized, or somebody and they'll say well you know i the the plant felt kind of like like cold so i figured figured i'd cover it up and it, you know uh, i thought it you know, would be nice uh, on this table here. And then I was proud of myself, so I kind of like bowed three times to just like, you know, congratulate myself. So now, obviously, all this stuff is made up, you know, because like the, the only reason the person did what they, they did was because of the post-hypnotic suggestion. All right, this is just an example of how we know we have an unconscious. There are many, many other ways that, that we know. And again, like even much, you don't even have to like go to the experiments. like. If you realize that, um, that we know a lot, like our entire vocabulary, the vocabulary of most people, you know, spans thousands of words, I would guess. And, and again, we can't be conscious of this stuff, you know, because we can only be aware of only a few things at a time. So all these memories have to be in our unconscious. <laughs> so, all right, this, the magic isn't happening right now. Ordinarily, when I do this, um, I don't know, maybe I have to do it with people for, for it to happen because it really does feel amazing, you know, when I begin to, it's, it's, very, it's like a revelation, but, and maybe it's because I'm tired, but, uh, and I'm going to like, I'm going to keep repeating this because you got to get this. I mean, this, sometimes in my shows, I will like, you know, do the theme for half the show and then just go on to other stuff. I'm not going to do that with this. I'm going to go straight through the show, you know, repeat it over and over until you get it. All right. So, oh, one thing I what I wanted to say also is like, right now you're listening to what I'm saying. You're seeing me, right? But your unconscious is also looking and and hearing. You know, looking at me and seeing me. You know, the TV. Basically, what I'm saying is like, 
whenever you see or hear anything, it's actually your unconscious that's seeing or hearing it and then just kind of like making you aware of what it wants you to be aware of. And, and a good way to understand this is like a lot of times, like you could be watching me and, and listening to me, and but your unconscious doesn't want to focus on me. You, you could be drifting off into a thought and you're watching me and, and, and hearing me, but like if somebody were to ask you what I just said, you wouldn't be able to say it because your unconscious was involved in some other kind of thought, was distracted. So that's a good example of like the unconscious, like, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at something and hearing something, but our unconscious is choosing to actually make us aware of something else. All right, so basically what I, the, the point of that is like that whenever we're quote unquote consciously perceiving anything, uh, our unconscious is also perceiving stuff. Because the reason I say that is because some people will say, well, like, if you're going to make a decision, it's partly based on conscious perception and partly based on unconscious data. So basically the way I've just explained it, you can understand how, like, also the perception, the real-time perception of what's going on is also happening at the unconscious level. Okay, it doesn't require consciousness at all. Again, the consciousness is just what the unconscious is making us conscious of, making us aware of. Let's go through it again. Um, if all of our vocabulary, all we've ever learned, all of the criteria, the factors, the data upon which we're going to base any decision is stored in the unconscious and it has to be stored in the unconscious because we can't um, be aw aware of all that stuff at once at any given time conscious mind if all that stuff is in the unconscious and if by definition our conscious mind isn't even aware of the unconscious okay that's why we call it the unconscious the obvious irrefutable unequivocal conclusion has to be that our every decision has to be made at the level of the unconscious. The unconscious is the only part of our mind that has access to itself. In other words, like, we're, you know, all that, where all our data is that we're going to base anything, because, again, if we're going to make a decision, it's got to be based on something. If it's like, if it's a decision involving words, it's got to be based on words we've learned, words we've memorized. If it's a decision based on, on let's say, um, memories of, let's, let's say we want to, like, decide what to eat, then we got to remember what, what different foods taste like. You know, we don't store that in our conscious mind. We can't. It's all in, in our unconscious. So all the, you know, whatever the decision is, it's got to be at the level of the unconscious, okay? So, again, you've got the data. All the data has to be in our unconscious because it can't be in our, in our conscious mind. And our conscious mind cannot access the unconscious because it's not even aware of the unconscious that tells you that the decision, every decision we make, is really the unconscious making the decision, sifting through all its information for like, you know, is this the right thing to do? Is this going to create pleasure? Is, does this make sense? Is this going to work? You know, it's, it's sifting through all that kind of information, making the decision and then making us aware of the decision. Now, notice Whenever we make decisions, like, you know, we're not aware of, of, of like, this process, this decision-making process. We're not, we're, a lot of times, you know, like, if somebody asks you, you want to go to the park or a movie, and you say, I think I feel like a movie. And you can't really explain why you prefer a movie that, to the park, really. A lot of times, this is, and that's another way of, of, of understanding how, you know, our decisions are at the level of the unconscious. You know, if, if we were conscious of, of our, how we make our decisions, of our decisions, you know, if, if our decisions were made at the conscious level, we would be conscious of, of all this stuff. Okay. Um, this is major. I mean, this is such a simple... And another reason this is, like, so very important is because, like, you know, major institutions magazines, scientific journals will try to um, to defend free will 
by wrongly, but by claiming that not, not everything is deterministic. Because historically, the, the main argument against free will is that we, we live in a deterministic universe, everything is cause and effect, and that makes free will impossible. I've done many shows on this. That's obviously clear. And so they say that, like, because they, they think because, like, events at the quantum level happen, can happen randomly, they can't. But they think that, like, a random event could be a freely willed event. It can't anyhow, but anyway, for, for these institutions and magazines and all journals that don't get that causality makes free will completely impossible, there is no such thing as a causality or things happening without a cause, and even if there was, you know, an, an uncaused thought couldn't be caused by us anyhow, if these institutions, magazines, journals don't get that, then this is a second very, very clear way that, that they should be able to understand it. Let's go through it again. Okay. If we're going to make a decision or if we're going to do something, you know, the decision to, to act, to move, whatever, um, it's got to be based on something. We can't, we're, we don't do stuff for, for no reason. If we do it for no reason, if it's an impulse, you know, just like a, a twitch or something, that's not freely willed anyhow, right? So we're talking about decisions when we talk about, like, what we will ourselves to do. So if we're going to make any kind of, like, if we're going to will ourselves to do anything, it's got to be based on data. This data has to be in our unconscious. One, consciousness is only awareness. Con that's another thing. Consciousness is only awareness. Consciousness isn't a storage facility, okay? The unconscious is the for storage facility. Consciousness isn't awareness. Consciousness isn't decision-making, okay? So if consciousness isn't awareness, I mean, if, if consciousness, sorry, isn't um, storage and consciousness isn't decision-making, then the only part of our mind that can store information data and can decide is the unconscious. Okay, so you've got, you're making a decision, all right? You've got to base it on something. Um, your uncon again, your conscious mind cannot access, doesn't even know that your unconscious mind exists. That's why they call it the unconscious, okay? <laughs> that's, you know, that's, you've got to be clear on this. Your, your, your unconscious, is, we call it, we define it. It's been given the term unconscious because we're not conscious of it, all right? So you've got, you're making a decision. It's got to be based on something. All this data is in the unconscious. Clearly, obviously, unescapably, the only part of the mind that has access to that information to be able to use it to, to make a decision is the unconscious, okay? So it's the unconscious considering, sifting through, analyzing, you know, um, all this data, you know, in order to, um, to make the decision, and then it makes our conscious mind, it makes us aware of what it's decided. We become conscious of what we've decided. Again, some people might say, let, let's say somebody asks you, um, you know, choose a number between 1 and 10. And some, some people might claim, well, your conscious mind has to be involved in a decision like that because you have to consciously hear, you know, the question in order to decide. Again, the way, as I explained before, basically, um, while... What, what's happening is actually is your unconscious is actually hearing the question and making you aware that it's hearing the question. So in other words, like, you know, you don't, you're not really like basing your decision on consciously hearing the question because, again, your unconscious is hearing it. Um, okay, this, again, um, thanks. <laughs> I was looking for camera change. Um, Basically, this is major. I'm going to, like, you know, promote myself again. I, I think, you know, a correct, you know, this is going to be on YouTube, okay? I'm going to, this is episode um, 93. If you've got evidence that, that any scientist, any um, major thinker has proposed this, this um, truth that all our decisions, that everything we decide is made entirely by the unconscious, as I'm saying now, then, then post it. Post a, a, you know, 
the um, you know a sentence or at least a reference, a citation for it, because I, I think I may actually be the only person in the world who is really explaining to the world that free will is impossible because all our decisions must be completely made by the unconscious. Okay, that's the thing. Some some scientists, Freud, whatever, um, will claim that um, we don't have a free will because if if our unconscious mind is taking part in the decision, it obviously can't be freely will decision. And that makes sense also. But what they haven't gotten, and I think what I'm really revolutionizing the world with with this is that. Um, you know, discovering is that you know it's our our unconscious is entirely making the decision. Okay, no amount of any decision we make is made by our conscious mind. Again, one because consciousness is only awareness. Consciousness um, can't access the unconscious. It's not even aware of it. And so, if if all the data is in the unconscious, the only part of our mind that can access the information to to um, to make the decision is the unconscious. Okay, I think we've explained this. All right, so another commercial for our um, New York show. No free will every Wednesday. Anel and I do, and Anel is producing that show. Um, it's a live call-in show, 11 o'clock, um, and we we actually do this every um, every other week. Every other week, we'll we'll present one of these shows on there. But it's Manhattan Neighborhood Network, um, Channel 56, Time Warner, Wednesdays, 11 o'clock. Um, and again, this show is on every Thursday night, uh, Channel 76, White Plains. Um, and it's at 9 o'clock. And I upload all the, the episodes to, to um, YouTube. You know, just Google Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. Okay. I think we've explained this. I will be back on other shows to explain why free will is impossible and how we can create an entirely new, much more wonderful world by understanding this. Thanks for watching.